Hello and welcome to In-Depth, I'm Tina Jha. The Golan Heights, a tiny, rocky plateau that was part of Syria until 1967, is back in international headlines. On 25th March 2019, US President Donald Trump signed a proclamation recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the disputed region, reversing decades of American policy. Trump's move has drawn intense criticism from across the world. Member countries of the UN Security Council have refused to recognize Israel's sovereignty over Golan Heights, which has been the center of conflict between Israel and Syria for decades. The Arab countries have even warned of a new wave of tensions in the Middle East. But why is the international community, including US allies, opposed to the decision of recognizing Israeli sovereignty over Golan Heights? And why did Donald Trump reverse his country's decades-old policy on the disputed plateau? We try and understand today in depth. We also analyze why Golan Heights is so important and contentious. U.S. President Donald Trump's move to recognize the Israeli sovereignty over Golan Heights has overturned the U.S. policy on Israel and Syria. The move has attracted much criticism from the Arab world, the European countries, as well as several other countries, including its own allies, that are terming Trump's act as a violation of international laws as well as the U.N. Charter. While Israel has thanked the United States of America for the historic move, Syria has called the proclamation a blatant attack on its sovereignty. Golan Heights, the 1800 square kilometers plateau in Syrian territory that has been the area of contention between Israel and Syria for a long time. Earlier this month, US President Donald Trump reversed the US policy on Israel and Syria with just a tweet. On 21st March, Donald Trump said, after 52 years, it is time for the United States to fully recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, adding that the area is of critical strategic and security importance to Israel as well as regional stability. On 25th March, Donald Trump signed an order officially recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the occupied Golan Heights in the presence of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Today, aggressive action by Iran and terrorist groups in southern Syria, including Hezbollah, continue to make the Golan Heights a potential launching ground for attacks against Israel. Very violent attacks. Any possible future peace agreement must account for Israel's need to defend itself from Syria, Iran, and other regional threats. We do not want to see another attack like the one suffered this morning north of Tel Aviv. Thanking the U.S. President for the proclamation, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu called it a historic day. He said the U.S. has recognized Israeli sovereignty over Golan Heights at a time when aggressive acts by Iran and terrorist groups continue to make the region a potential launching ground for attacks on Israel. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said, the U.S. president has recognized the reality. At the very moment, President Trump boldly recognized the Golan Heights for what it is, a part of Israel. As you, most of you would have seen by now, just a short while ago, President Trump, alongside Prime Minister Netanyahu, signed a decree, a decree affirming Israel's sovereignty over the Golan. The proclamation has put the U.S. at odds with much of the international community. Internationally, Golan Heights is recognized as an Israel-occupied territory in Syria. Syria called America's decision a blatant attack on its sovereignty and a violation of international laws. Syria alleged that the U.S. proclamation goes against the U.N. Charter and would heighten tensions in the region. France, Britain, Germany, Belgium and Poland also protested against America's act saying any declaration of a unilateral border chain goes against the foundation of the rules-based international order and the UN Charter. Russia too said it considers Golan Heights as a part of Syria. Arab nations, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar and Kuwait have rejected America's Golan Heights proclamation, 
saying the decision will impact peace process, security and stability in West Asia. Turkish President Erdogan said the country will never allow the legitimization of Israel's invasion of Golan Heights. President Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu have reached to a personal deal to strike a deal that this man got, got oxygenated from his uh, uh, involvement with Russia in his election, that Mueller give him a clean chit. And also Netanyahu is uh, facing another general election next month where he wanted to win election. So by occupying territories, looting a territories, you do not glorify a, ter a, a thief. You simply, uh, you have to return the territories to the, its origin and you call for peace for that you can have a comprehensive peace. Once the United States have declared like this, it become no more a trusted broker in the Middle East for a peace process. So therefore, it's becoming more chaotic and definitely Syrian people will not give up the Golan. Golan has to return to Syria by all means. And that's what the government of Syria have said. We will return it by all means, including war, if we have to go for a war to regain our territory back. So nobody will give up territory in Syria. The Syrian Golan belong to the Syrian people and it has to be returned to the motherland. In 1967, Israel occupied the Golan Heights during the Six Day War triggering a long-drawn conflict with Syria over the region. The United Nations has been rejecting Israeli occupation of Golan Heights ever since. But Israel continued its occupation of the territory and implemented its administration and law in the region despite global condemnation. In 1981, the United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution declaring that the Israeli Golan Heights law which effectively annexed the Golan Heights is null and void and without international legal effect. It also called upon Israel to rest in its action. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. A rocky plateau, Golan Heights has a political and strategic significance for both Syria and Israel. Israel seized Golan Heights from Syria in 1967 and then implemented its law on it in 1981. It continued its occupation on the region despite the United Nations passing a resolution terming it null and void. Golan Heights is a disputed area in the Middle East that intersects Syria, Lebanon, Jordan and Israel. Roughly boat-shaped, it has an area of 1,800 square kilometers. Golan Plateau has a natural border that includes Jordan River, Galilee Sea Mount Hemen, and Yarmouk River. Israel seized Golan Heights from Syria in 1967. Known as the Six-Day War, most Syrian Arab inhabitants fled the area during the conflict. Syria tried to regain Golan during the Middle East War in 1973, but the assault was thwarted despite the Israeli forces suffering heavy losses. Both countries signed a ceasefire in 1974 with a UN observer force monitoring it. An armistice line was drawn and the region came under the Israeli military control. Israel unilaterally annexed the Golan Heights in 1981. It implemented its law, administration and judicial process on Golan. But the United Nations Security Council did not recognize it. Nearly 20,000 people in more than 30 Jewish settlements on Golan. An estimated 20,000 Syrians are also present. Golan Heights is a Syrian territory bordering it used to be with Palestine and there is a Tepris uh, lake which is part of it and the Israeli when Israeli annexed the, the uh, Palestine that part became a border between Syria and Israel so that area was Syria lost it in the 1967 war in 1973 war October we tried to regain and then the, they stopped the war we regained little part of it and the truce was there so the war 1974 was uh, there was a truth so that was stopped so 1200 uh, kilometers square kilometers is still occupied by Israel the Syrian artillery regularly shelled entire northern Israel from 1948 to 1967, when Syria controlled the heights. The topography of Golan Heights provides an excellent vantage point to monitor Syrian movements. The Golan mountainous region also worked as a shield for Israel's security from Syria. 
कि वो वहाँ से अब वो सीरियन आर्मी जो है या जो भी है जो वो गोल्डन हाइट्स के एकदम किनारे पे नहीं आ सकती है जहाँ से वो पहले बमबारी करते थे इसराइल पर तो अब वो ख़त्म हो गया था सिक्सटी सेवन में फिर उन्होंने कब पूरा कब्जा कर लिया और बीच में एक जगह है नो मैंस लैंड है वो कुनेत्रा एक छोटा सा कस्बा है वहाँ पर तो उसमें वहाँ पर यू के भी ट्रुप्स हैं वहाँ पर पीस के लिए कि तो ये है अभी फिलहाल ये मतलब सिचुएशन है स्थिति वहाँ पे देर आर सेवरल अदर रीजन वाई गोलन इज पिविटल फॉर इसराइल द एरिया इज अ की सोर्स ऑफ वाटर फॉर द एरिड रीजन रेन वाटर फ्रॉम द गोलन कैचमेंट फीड्स इन टू जॉर्डन रिवर द एरिया प्रोवाइड्स अ थर्ड ऑफ इसराइल्स वाटर सप्लाई द लैंड इज वर्टाइल एंड द वॉलिक सॉइल इज गुड फॉर वाइन यार्ड्स ऑर्चर्ड एंड टू रेज कैटल The Golan is also home to Israel's only ski resort. Geographic uh, location hai iska. Ye bahut mahatvapurna hai. Isme um, kafi agriculture land hai. Isme uh, pani ke faware hain jo kai hazaron saal purane hain jo spring water jisko kehte hain. Aur wahan sabse acche uh, phal ugaye jate hain aur uh, adhiktar uh, barish wahan hoti hai. वहाँ स्नोफॉल भी होता है जिसकी वजह से इस पूरे इलाके में वो जो पानी कम है वहाँ से लिया जाता है इसराइल हैज क्लेम्ड एटलीस्ट 1150 स्क्वायर किलोमीटर्स ऑफ गोल्डन हाइट्स सीरिया वांट्स टू सिक्योर द रिटर्न ऑफ द गोल्डन हाइट्स एज पार्ट ऑफ एनी पीस डील हाउएवर द लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग डिस्प्यूट ओवर गोल्डन हाइट्स बिटवीन सीरिया एंड इसराइल मेक्स लाइफ डिफिकल्ट इन द एरिया विद इनपुट्स फ्रॉम लीना शर्मा ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी The Arab-Israeli conflict is a modern phenomenon that has its roots in the end of the 19th century. The conflict became a major international issue with the birth of Israel in 1948. The Arab-Israeli conflict has resulted in at least five major wars and a number of minor conflicts. It has also been the source of two major Palestinian uprisings. In our next report we take a look at the history of Israel Arab conflict most notably from 1948 to 2006 and the reasons behind these uprisings In November 1947 the United Nations voted to partition the British mandated Palestine into a Jewish state and an Arab state Clashes broke out almost immediately between Jews and Arabs in Palestine Amongst the most infamous events was the attack on an Arab village on 9th April 1948. Days later, the Arab forces attacked a Jewish convoy, killing 78 people. On 15th May 1948, Israel declared independence on the eve of the withdrawal by British forces. The next day, Arab forces from Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon occupied areas in southern and eastern Palestine, East Jerusalem, including the small Jewish quarter of the old city. The Israelis meanwhile won control of the main road to Jerusalem through the Yehuda mountains. By early 1949, the Israelis managed to occupy all of the Negev up to the former Egypt-Palestine frontier except for the Gaza strip. Between February and July 1949, as a result of separate agreements between Israel and each of the Arab states, a temporary frontier was fixed between Israel and its neighbors. In Israel this war is remembered as its war of independence. In the Arab world it came to be known as the Nakba or catastrophe because of the large number of refugees and displaced persons resulting from the war. Tensions mounted again with the rise of the power of Egyptian president Gamal Abdel Nasser who was a staunch pan-Arab nationalist. In 1956 Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal, a vital waterway connecting Europe and Asia that was largely owned by French and British concerns. France and Britain responded by striking a deal with Israel and in October 1956 Israel invaded Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. In 5 days the Israeli army captured Gaza and occupied most of the peninsula east of the Suez Canal. The Israeli forces withdrew in March 1957 after an intervention by the United Nations. Arab and Israeli forces clashed for the third time in June 1967 in what came to be known as the Six-Day War. The war occurred after a series of events that escalated tensions. 
and ended with Israel capturing the Sinai Peninsula, the Golan Heights, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. Of these, only the Sinai Peninsula was returned, while the Golan Heights and East Jerusalem were formally annexed by Israel. On 6 October 1973, Israel was attacked by Egypt across the Suez Canal and by Syria on the Golan Heights. While the Israeli forces suffered heavy casualties, their army pushed its way into the Syrian territory, establishing forces on West Bank. Israel and Egypt signed a ceasefire agreement in November and peace agreements on 18 January 1974. On 26 March 1979, Israel and Egypt signed a peace treaty formally ending the state of war that had existed between the two countries for 30 years. As per the treaty, Israel returned the entire Sinai Peninsula to Egypt and Egypt in turn recognized Israel's right to exist. However, on 5th June 1982, less than six weeks after Israel's complete withdrawal from Sinai Peninsula, increased tensions between Israelis and Palestinians resulted in the Israeli bombing of Beirut and southern Lebanon a stronghold of the Palestine Liberation Organization. Through the war, Israel succeeded in exiling the PLO military personnel and withdrew troops from Lebanon by June 1985. In July 2006, military organization Hezbollah launched an operation against Israel, leading to a retaliatory action by Israel. The war lasted 34 days and left more than 1,000 Lebanese dead and about 1 million others displaced. For 70 years, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has affected the Middle East landscape and defied the international community's peace-building efforts. In the past few years, Israel has improved its relations with Egypt and Jordan. But as intermittent fighting continues in Israel and Palestine, both Israel and the Arab countries have to take more concrete steps towards strengthening and improving their relations for long-lasting peace and stability in the region. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Six-Day War was the third in a long line of Arab-Israeli wars. It began on 5th June 1967 and spanned only six days, during which Israel fought against a combined force of Egypt, Jordan and Syria. The war ended on 10th of June the same year, in which Israel defeated the three mightiest armies of the region. In our next report, let's look at what were the origins and immediate reasons that led to the Six-Day War. On June 5, 1967, Israel went to war with the armies of Egypt, Syria and Jordan. Israeli defense forces launched preemptive airstrikes that crippled the air force of Egypt and its allies. Israel then staged a successful ground offensive and seized the Sinai Peninsula and the Gaza Strip from Egypt, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan and the Golan Heights from Syria. The brief yet bloody conflict ended with a UN-brokered ceasefire. But the outcome of the war in which Israel defeated the three mightiest armies of the region significantly altered the map of the Middle East, giving rise to the lingering geopolitical friction. The result of the Six-Day War has blocked the path to peace between Israel and Palestine until this day. The Defense Minister of Israel himself, he said, we provoked the Syrian because they wanted the Golan. In fact, they had eye on the Golan because of its water resources, because of its natural resources. Mm -hmm. Syria, and along with the Arab countries, went for a war with the 1967 because of the Palestine. We knew that there was, there was, there, there was a, a war going to happen. Everybody knew about it. Israel took the full advantage because they were ill-equipped, uh, the Arab countries, and the, uh, the West was supporting the Israel in this war, and Israel wanted to take the West Bank and Jerusalem, and you can see. I mean, denying the existence of people in the land. You are not taking land without people. You are taking people, indigenous people, with their own land. So therefore, when Israel is trying to expand, expansion of Israel is at the cost of the natural inhabitants, which cannot be accepted, neither by any UN charter, nor any international law, nor anybody can accept a good neighboring. So therefore, you cannot even have it as a bargaining chips that you can retain the territories. The territories has to go back to their origin. Uh, do you want peace with Syrian? Israel, look, have taken part of Syria, have taken part of Lebanon, have taken part of Sinai, have taken part of Jordan. How can you have a peace with the person who is chopping the lands around him? 
So you can't say because they wanted to go for a war, we are, we are chopping this land and we are annexing it and we are taking it in our own. No, there is no question. When the international community, if there is an international community, if there is a UN Security Council, if there is a superpower wanted to have a peace in this region, they have to adhere to the United Nations Security Council resolution, which is 338242. And then when you have returned and you give the Palestinian, you give the Syrian, then we are ready to coexist with you. That is the whole issue of the Golan. Golan is part of the whole process of the era Arab-Israeli conflict. Arab-Israeli conflict can only be solved by giving the Palestinian their right, by returning the occupied territories, and then you can have coexistence among all the parties. The 1967 war has its root in the Israel-Palestine conflict back when both territories were under British rule. Both Arabs and Jews, dissatisfied by British rule in the British Mandate of Palestine, revolted in the late 30s and 40s. These revolts eventually led to the 1948 Palestine War, in which Arabs and Jews fought against each other while the region was still under British rule. Once Israel was carved out of the territory in 1948, Egypt, Jordan, Syria and Iraq tried to invade the area. This was the first of the four Arab-Israeli wars that took place in the region. A second major conflict known as the Suez Crisis erupted in 1956 when Israel, the United Kingdom and France staged a controversial attack on Egypt in response to Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser's nationalization of the Suez Canal. By the mid-1960s, Syrian-backed Palestinian guerrillas had begun staging attacks across the Israeli border, provoking reprisal raids from the Israel Defense Forces. In April 1967, the skirmishes worsened after Israel and Syria fought a ferocious air and artillery engagement in which six Syrian fighter jets were destroyed. Following the air battle, the Soviet Union provided Egypt with intelligence that Israel was moving troops to its northern border with Syria in preparation for a full-scale invasion. The information was inaccurate, but it nevertheless stirred Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser into action. In a show of support for his Syrian allies, he ordered Egyptian forces to advance into the Sinai Peninsula, where they expelled a United Nations peacekeeping force that had been guarding the border with Israel for over a decade. On 22nd May 1967, the Egyptian president banned Israeli ships from the Straits of Tehran, the sea passage connecting the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba. This was the immediate spark for the 1967 war. In response to Egypt's military deployment along the border at the Sinai region, Israel launched a preemptive strike on Egypt's air force on June 5th. The strike took out almost all of the country's air force and enabled Israel to invade the Sinai Peninsula. Simultaneously, Israel also took out air bases belonging to Jordan and Syria, crippling the Arab Front. By the end of the war, Israel had annexed the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan and Golan Heights from Syria. For the first time in almost two millennia, the Jewish holy places in Jerusalem were under the control of Jews. Israel actually refused to give the Palestinian their right. It's refused to recognize that there are Palestinians inside Palestine. So they give some of them 1948 the, the Israeli identity, whom we call them the Arab Jewish who lived in the Israel as Israeli citizens. Other one of them, they expel them. Look what's happening in Gaza. Gaza is 70 percent of Gaza Strip are actually expelled people from the rest of Palestine. They have went and took shelter there. In Syria, we hosted more than a million Palestinians. In Jordan, there are 2.5 million uh, Palestinian refugees. In Lebanon, the same. In Egypt, the same. And the rest of the Arab world. So therefore, all these people have been expelled because Israel refused to accept two-state solution to the crisis. Because now you say this is only a state for the Jewish, which means you are removing the identity of the Christians, of the Muslims and the Arabs and, and the, the region, and you are just declaring it as a Jewish state, which is not possible, which is impossible, actually. The 1967 war changed the world's perception of Israel and its armed forces, but the annexation of East Jerusalem and Golan Heights were not recognized internationally. The UN Security Council adopted a resolution in 1981 which declared annexation of Golan Heights illegal and called on Israel to resign its action. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV.
So that's it from us today in in-depth. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and send us your feedback and suggestions. Thank you for your time. Thank you.